webinar. We would love for you to go into the chat. Tell us what you do and where you are listening or watching from, just so we can kind of get a feel where, where everybody is located and what our audience is like. Hopefully everyone can hear this and you've been tweeting about it. But today we're going to talk about using Symbaloo to bring together your favorite tech tools. So Brian, where are they coming from? Let me see if I can. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Okay. Janet? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so let's see. It looks like we have people coming in from all over the place. We have Michigan, California, Tennessee, we have Missouri, we have uh, a lot from Ohio, some in Houston, North Carolina, St. Clair Shores, Michigan. Uh, we have someone from Qatar. Um, all over the place. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, great. Auburn, Washington. Wow. Thank you, They're everyone. From everywhere. Enjoying. I hope they can handle my Texas accent. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's exciting. Last night I had a webinar and I had a whole group of people from Curacao and I was so jealous. They're out on an island and I was ready to go visit until I found out you have to quarantine for 14 days when you get there. So I'll, I'll be waiting on that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Awesome. Um, so I think. Are we ready? I believe, I believe the, uh, the stream is picking it up. The recording is Just good. Now to one go. Just one last check. Um, Maybe let's let's give it a minute or two. Uh, our last webinar cut off uh, about two minutes from the beginning of the webinar, so let's just keep okay. seeing well, I'll keep where going. everyone's coming in. Yeah, let's. Oh, yeah, let's continue seeing where everyone's coming in from. We have uh, Minnesota. We have someone from Lima, Peru. Ooh. Lockport, New York. A lot of Texas. Well, it's good to Mobile. see that Simbaloo has made it around the world. <laughs> definitely definitely here we go greetings from ukraine wow, wow. awesome this is this is very exciting again yeah. thank you all for joining uh we're very excited to share uh how you can use symbol to bring together your favorite tech tools um janet will be uh sharing her presentation shortly uh just waiting to give it a couple of minutes to make sure that the recording picks up everything and that we don't miss anything so that we can share the recorded webinar after if you ever want to uh, refer back to it or share it with your colleagues or friends uh, just to make sure that all the content is there so we'll be starting in just a minute or two so if you registered for the webinar you'll be getting um, a link to the recording via email in the next day or so give it some time um, when i watch a webinar i prefer to just kind of sit back and watch and then get that recording and you know and then kind of go into depth on stuff but that's the way I learn. Some people do different things. Some people take notes like crazy. And so however you learn best, that's how we want you to do this. I know some of you have probably started back to school and some of you are waiting. Um, the district that I live in, we're waiting to hear tonight from the school board on when the kids actually will go face to face. I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area and we have been hit very hard by uh, the COVID-19 virus. So different schools are doing different things. And Brian, you're in New York, right? No, you're in California. Yeah, no, I recently uh, just moved back from New York. So I'm uh, outside, I'm in the uh, greater LA area. So right outside of Los Angeles. There were some earthquakes there this morning. Did you feel them? Yes, no, I did not. Uh, okay. I think I was sound asleep for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I, I saw uh, some people posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, definitely had a lot of uh, friends and relatives that were, uh, you know, communicating this morning. Did you guys feel it? You know, half the time it's, uh, you know, not not too much of a big deal, but it can get uh, a little a little bad sometimes. But OK, I think we've had enough time just to ensure that we pick up this uh, the webinar stream on the recording. So, uh, Janet, uh, you know, without further ado, you can go ahead and uh, get started. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. And we have Derek in the background. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat, whether they're Simbaloo questions or questions for me on some of my favorite tech tools or just questions in general. And um, 
we'll either answer them during the webinar, but we're also taking a few minutes at the end to make sure that we uh, attempt to answer everyone's questions. And if we don't know the answer, we will find the answer and get back to you. So I am going to move forward. If I can make my screen move. Here we go. Let's see. It's not moved. Oh, whoops, I went too far. Uh, I'm Janet Quarter. That's a picture of me there. I would love for you to follow me on Twitter. It's at Quarter J. And that's my email address. You're always welcome to email me. I'm a big Twitter follower as far as education goes. I don't usually tweet too many personal things, but um, I do have a huge PLN on Twitter, and I love to grow that PLN because that's how I learn so much. I am in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm a retired educator after 30-something years in the classroom and as an instructional technologist and teaching at the college level, I retired and now I'm a consultant. So I travel around the United States, but I'd love to come to some of these countries that are here. And um, I do training for teachers and I speak at conferences. So I would love to connect with you. And um, the first thing I want to do is I want this to be interactive. I hate to be just spoken to, talked to the whole time. So one of the things I want you to do is to go to this symbol, uh, this uh, Padlet, which is one of my favorite tech tools. Uh, it's at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash 2020 symbol Lou. Bit.ly slash 2020 symbol Lou bit.ly slash 2020 symbol Lou. And when you get there, if you're not a Padlet user in the bottom right corner, there's a, a little pink circle with a plus sign and you just click it and it will give you a sticky note or you can just double click on the background. Um, if you want to put your Twitter handle in there, you can. So people can, I'll go ahead and demo this. Um, uh, my favorite tech tool, of course, is symbol Lou. You can put a link. What I love about uh, Padlet is you can put links, you can put videos, you can put all kinds of stuff. Um, this is one way when I am presenting at conferences and when I'm presenting at schools, for me to learn things and to find out what people are using is by using um, a Padlet because I can quickly gather information from everyone. I'm seeing Seesaw. Um, woo, it's coming in fast. I'm so glad y'all are participating. Loom. I was talking to someone about Loom this morning. It's on my list to look at. Um, if you're using Padlet with students, it is a great way to get a response from every student because you know as well as I do, if, if you say, uh, raise your hand and tell me what you don't understand about this topic, half the class or more than half will not raise their hand. So this is a way to get Feedback from every student. Boy, Flipgrid. Ooh, it's going Screencastify, Canva. All right, I can't wait to study these after we're all through today. I'm going to give you a second more. Adobe Spark, Google Classroom, Google Suite, Google Drive. Genuinely is on my list to study. I've looked at it a little bit, Class Dojo. So y'all are sharing some of the, my favorite tools. And if you're not familiar with these, you can go back to this Padlet. You can always come back to it and you can uh, spend some time looking at it and say, oh, I've never heard of Satori. Satori is a um, timeline builder. Very, very cool. There's a free and a paid version. But you can go back to this and look and see, I've never heard of this. Maybe I need to investigate it. Because these are other educators that are sharing some of their favorite tools. I'm, hey, Brian, I'm loving this. We're getting some real interesting things. Wakelet. Yeah, this is this is great. I have, I, the, have you, there are a lot of uh, familiar uh, tools here, but a mm -hmm. lot of new ones that I'm definitely excited to take a look at myself. Yim Kid is one of my favorite because it was created by a high school student. And that to me tells me our kids can do almost anything and we shouldn't discourage them. They can be out there programming and, and making games that are, and that are, taking over the education world. So this Padlet will be here for you. Uh, it will not go away for, I'll probably keep it up for six months or so. Um, so go back at it and go back and look at it and you can get all kinds of information on it. But again, it's a tool that you can use in the classroom and use it to collect uh, data from your students. What I like about it is um, right now, as many of you are doing, I'm trying to focus on tools that can be both uh, used in remote learning in face-to-face -face learning, and then in that blended hybrid class. So um, a lot of the tools that I'm going to show you today, they can be used in any uh, format because most of us are going to be using, you know, a blended for or a hybrid format, or we're going to be having 
you know, we might not have face to face. We may be all remote. It just depends on where you live. So I'm going to go back to our presentation and I'm just going to show you a few of my favorites. Now, if I showed you all my favorites, we'd be here about six weeks. So I'm going to show you a few of mine. And the first two are Slides Go and Slides Mania. And these two are tools for you and your students, but I use them all the time. And so I'm going to show you Slides Mania first. These are free presentation tools. Their backgrounds, what I like about them, it doesn't matter if you are a Google school or a Microsoft school. When you find one, you can, I'm going to just show you this file cabinet. This one amazes me. Um, when you find one, you want to come down here and you can download it as a PowerPoint or a Google slideshow. So you have that option of doing either. But if you have not seen this one and this one's all over Twitter because it really is pretty amazing. You've got your title here. Each of these file cabinets opens. You can title them whatever you want, but each one opens. And then inside of each file cabinet, there are folders that you can put information in. <coughs> Excuse me. I come up here to education and um, there's all kinds of education templates. Now there are tons of ads on here. Like I just saw coach. Um, don't worry about all of that. Here's another ad. What you want to make sure that you don't do is click anything that says download here. You want to look for the open in a PowerPoint or open in um, Google Slides. So here's the theme here. So these are templates for your PowerPoints and your um, Google Slides presentations. I get tired of the same ones. Your kids get tired of the same ones. So here is Slides Go. Very similar. You can also, ooh, they have some new ones here. Uh, look at this online notebook, which is really taking over right now. Comic style. Chemistry lesson. Um, I like Slides Go because they have, when you go into education, they have all the different content areas. You can look, if you teach science, you might find something in the medical uh, area. But this is good for you and your students. 100% free, which is in my price range. When you're retired, you don't have a big budget to use. So Slides Go and Slides Mania are two of my favorites. There's some more, and I have put them on uh, my web mixes, but those are my two favorites. Text Giraffe is one I just found out about a couple of weeks ago. Showed this to Brian a few weeks ago. You just come in here and you can type in whatever you want and you click go. So I type in my name. Your kids will go pull up crazy with this one. All of these are different styles. And look, there are pages of them. And so I can just click on those and download them. This is one I used for my uh, workspace because you can insert an image. I like to use these for titles because I want my title to stand out. I want it to just pop. I want the kids to be able to see that title to make sure that they focus on that. But there's tons of these and uh, free. There is, a, I think there may be a paid version, but when I click on this one, here it is and I can download it. Don't do this start button. Ignore all those start buttons. I usually just do copy image and paste image, but it's totally up to you how you use it. So that is Text Giraffe on my workspace. I have a ton of other text generators, but again, I like to use them for the titles, for things that stand out. Now, note, whoops, whoo, going a little fast here. Note, um, this one I would use with secondary students. And also, if you are working on a master's or a doctorate or you have your personal children that are in high school, college, middle school, you will want to share this with them. It is a website and an app and it's 100 percent free, which is, you know, I love free. So I'm going to note. And here's what it looks like. I'm in my account and right here. I can create a class that is brand new. I don't have classes because I'm retired, but you teachers would probably love that. Here is where I create a note. So it is nothing more than a word processor. I have my fonts. I have my font size, volatile size underline. I can um, bullet, do all that kind of stuff. I can print it and I can type. So my teacher is lecturing and I can just take notes. I probably would not take notes in this. I would use either um, Microsoft Word or a Google Doc, but some kids may like this. 
the beauty of it is when I have my notes in there, I have this button right up here, quiz. I can turn my notes into a quiz. Now, that's cool, but here's another cool part. I come right here to import a note. So I can put just a link to a website, or I can get a, so a document from my Google Drive or from my computer. So anywhere, if I've taken notes um, in Word or in any other format, I can put them there. I pull them in and it's going to turn my notes into a quiz. Also, I can upload a PDF. So maybe the teacher has given me a PDF. Great for your special needs kids that you need to support. So I'm going to close that out. I'm just going to show you some examples. So I have one here that is, I have several here. Um, let's look at this historical figures. All right. These are just some notes that someone took. But the beauty of it is I click on quiz and I have three types of questions. Fill in the blanks, multiple choice, and matching. So this one is, oh, and I don't know the answer. This is, whoops, I got it incorrect. The correct answer is Otto von Bismarck. This is the matching. I'm not even reading, so don't get mad. Oh, wait a minute. It's not, it's not. Oh, there it is. You just have to drag and drop. I wasn't dragging it hard enough. Look at that, though. Is that not the coolest thing? The drag and drop matching is new. I press enter. Incorrect. It gives me the correct answer. This one is a fill in the blank. I certainly don't know the answer, so I'm going to pop in some foreign language that I don't know. And I hit next. It's incorrect. The answer is Adolf. So this is based on the notes that I have taken. Is that not the coolest thing? 100% free. Now, um, if you use the app, you can actually scan a document and it will convert it to the text inside of note and you can take a quiz that way and if you have decent handwriting it will take your handwriting handwriting digitize it and turn it into notes so if you want to be a hit with your secondary college students note is the way to go i could think of all kinds of ways to use that in class now wheel of names is one of my favorite sites there are so many random name generators out there, but Wheel of Names is my favorite one, and I'm going to show you why. Here's parts of a microphone, microscope, 100% free. So on Wheel of Names, I can actually put in images, not just text, but images. So I spin, maybe I have a student spin, and it pops up, we have a winner. So they would have to tell me what part of the microscope is that showing and maybe explain what it does. Um, I could do this as a whole class or individual students. So we spin again and we have a winner. They would have to explain what part of the microscope is it pointing to. So think about your little kids. You can have um, your letters of the alphabet. You could have pictures like a ball and a dog and a cat and they have to tell you what the first letter is. So I love Wheel of Names, but this one is a novel study because a lot of times we think of random name generators as just a way to pick students. But look at this one. This is one I just found on the Internet when I typed in Wheel of Names examples. And you can change the image in the middle. Oh, I have to spin it. It's going to just spin. Sorry. You can put in your picture if you want to. or your, A lot of people put their Bitmoji in here. So... They have to write a poem about two main events in the story. So this is on any novel. Is that not awesome? I wish I could see y'all and hear you go, yay! Um, so uh, this is what Wheel of Names looks like. This one I just put in some um, science terms. Here's where I could add an image. So I click on that and I just find an image on my computer. So I'd have to download an image. I can come up here and customize. I can change the spin time. I can change the I can have piano music for the sound. I can change the colors. I can do all kinds of stuff. And I can have up to 500 names. A lot of your um, random name generators don't allow you to have that many. So that's kind of cool because I can have pictures. Now, this drives me crazy with these ads. So uh, I just click on full screen and I have my entire thing there. So those are just a few of my favorite tools that when I work with teachers or I speak at a conference, I like to show because I think um, we're all trying to make presentations and stuff. So Slides Go, Slides Mania, Text Giraffe really just adds a little pizzazz to what we're doing and they're fun. 
And then I think Note is a really good tool for our students to use or any of you that are working on advanced degrees. And Wheel of Names is great for you to use um, both remotely and face to face for um, picking content or student names. So um, my workspace, um, in just a minute, Brian is going to drop in here and tell us all about what a workspace is. But uh, my workspace includes the tools that I use when I go in and I work with teachers. So I kind of categorized my, them by presentation tools, and that's where Slides Mania, Slides Go, all that go. I have teacher tools. So what are some tools that I would only use as a teacher? I have student creation tools. I'm really big on students creating and not just consuming things. So on student creation tools, these are things that kids could use to create. Uh, my top apps for students. Um, our kids, they know the apps. They all, you'll see them at the grocery store sitting in the cart on their mom's phone and they're doing all kinds of games. But I like apps that have kids creating, not just drill and practice. So those are some of my favorite apps. I have classroom tools. And how, these are just tools that you or your students could use. And then formative assessment tools. How do I assess what my kids are doing? So I'm going to, let's see if I can share my screen here. Um, turn it over to Brian. So I'm going to stop sharing. Awesome. There you go, Brian. Thank you, Janet. That was great. Uh, those are some awesome tools. Um, so here I will share my screen and show you all uh, what a workspace is. Um, and one of the great things about it too is I will show you how you can pin these workspaces to your account when you have Symbaloo, um, when you have a Symbaloo account here. So what you can do is follow a nice account such as Janet's that she has full of uh, all of her favorite web tools. And here, hopefully you can see my screen here. Um, yeah. We have Symbaloo web mixes with the tiles. You have the web mix, which is this nice grid here. And the tiles are these little squares here. But the workspace lives as an extension to your symbol account, which would be on your left hand side here. Uh, you see the little nav, nav bar here with uh, that little M and, and the symbol logo here. Um, but those are your workspaces. And for example, for Janet, all you'll do to visit a workspace is type in or navigate to the custom URL for that web uh, workspace here. So you have quarterj.symbaloo.com. You don't have to worry about all the additional uh, text here. Uh, that'll auto-populate there. But once you visit quarterj.symbaloo.com, you'll see this is Janet's workspace. She has presentation tool web mix here at the top, formative assessment tools, and more. I'll let you, uh, or I'll let her explain that to you. Um, but you'll see all the set of resources that she shared and put together for you all. Uh, and the great feature about this is you can click the follow button at the top. Um, with that, when you click follow the workspace there, uh, it'll basically pin it to the left-hand side of your page. So now whenever you log into your Symbaloo account, you don't necessarily have to navigate to that custom URL. Um, you can just log in and click on this, the little icon there, and you'll see the list of her web mixes, and you can click on any of those and it'll take you to the set of resources that she's created. Um, as a follower of the workspace, you'll also receive any of the updates she makes, whether she adds new tiles, new web mixes, all of that is there. Um, and this is also a feature for uh, any Symbaloo user. Um, we offer a free Symbaloo Pro account, which will which you can create a, a workspace here. Um, the free account is ad supported, so you will be seeing ads. But if that's not a problem, um, you know you can use all this functionality at no cost. Um, and the paid solution does remove all advertising and provide a little more functionality. Um, but that is quickly how you can navigate to and add and pin one of these workspaces to your account so that you can follow and uh, access any of these helpful resources from Janet and other Symbaloo educators uh, on the site. Uh, but here I will hand it back to Janet so that she can continue with okay. uh, her great presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Let me go back. Can you see my screen now? I'm assuming it's on. Yes, I can see okay. it. I didn't hear anything. Woo! Okay, so uh, Brian works for Symbaloo, and I don't. I'm just a huge Symbaloo user. I've been using it for, oh, I don't know how many years. And um, it really is one of my favorite tools to uh, share with teachers 
because not only can I share my content, the things that I've curated, but I think it's an awesome tool for teachers because they can pull in all of the websites that they want their kids to use. And I always tell teachers, I say, you know, at the end of the year when parents are like, what can my kid work on in the summer? Create a symbol loo of good websites for them to use because you know when parents go out on the web and they start searching for stuff it's just overwhelming so if you as a teacher can pull together those cool sites for them that's awesome i've seen librarians who will pull together and curate all of their databases that their library has and all the good research things so um Simulu is has been around a while this the workspace is relatively new and so i was excited to get to try it out and to share it with you guys today um, because i have a ton of web mixes but this is one for, way for me to kind of pull them all into one space or pull in certain ones in one space so as uh, brian said this is a link to my web space quarterj.symbaloo.com and you are welcome to follow me there was a little follow button on there and anytime i make an addition you're going to see that so that's the nice thing about it um i love when i present things and every time i make changes people get to see those changes which it doesn't happen with every tech tool that we have so um this is just how you would get to um how you would add something to your workspace and I'll show you how to do it but I wanted to put the directions in the presentation so that when you're doing this later you'll go I don't remember what to do and so this will just help you out and remember you're getting a tape of this a recording of this so whoops before we do that I wanted to go to my symbol loop so I am um, I'm going to symbol loop and I want to show you my workspace and I just get there by clicking the little symbol blue logo looks like a waffle and um, you know I have all my web mixes up here and they just keep going y'all are familiar with that but right here is my workspace so this is where I have just pulled together my favorite training tools Others are things like there's a social, I have a social studies site and I think, uh, you know, other web mixes, but these are the ones that I share with teachers. So I can click on them here and you'll see these are my presentation tools and here's Slides Mania and Slides Go that I showed you earlier, but I also have Slides Carnival. And when I say presentation tools, these are tools that I can use not to present but to create my presentations uh, i've got pixabay which is an awesome tool for copyright free photos that you do not have to so, um, cite um, photo scissors and remove.bg take away the background these are some chrome extensions where you can color match um, <coughs> i just found this blush design last night at my other webinar that i was doing someone shared this and I want to share it with you because I really like it. <laughs> We're uh, talking so much now about diversity. These are artist collections of images that we can use. And they are, um, the thing is you can change you can change them. You can change these kids. You can change their skin tone. You can change what how they're standing. Whoops. You can randomize, you can change the background color, change their expression, change their clothes. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can put them in a wheelchair, you can have them standing. It's pretty amazing to me that artists have shared these and these are free to share. I just found that one last night. So these are tools when you're creating presentations that you probably want to look at. And uh, these are the font ones that I was talking about, some of the cool font ones. So um, another web mix that I have in this workspace is my formative assessment tools. And someone mentioned on the Padlet GIM kit, one of my favorites. I know you're all familiar with Quiz Is and Kahoot and Quizlet. Quizlet recently came out with the ability to play Quizlet live in individual mode. So if you're a remote learner, the, 
that works well. If you've not experienced that quiz, it's an old website, but for math, it's really awesome. It does have some science and language and geography in it, but it's really cool for math. So these are some things, these are tools that I would show teachers when you're talking about formative assessment, how are you getting that back? How are you finding out what the kids are, are doing? And I know there's a ton more. These are just the ones that are my favorites. And I'm constantly adding to this. Um, I also, when I present, don't like to overwhelm teachers too much. I know I do overwhelm because I always share a lot. And I know there's a ton more stuff. But when I do a presentation, I really like, you know, to give them a manageable uh, amount of stuff. Now, these are just apps. So if they're not an iPad user or um, have a mobile device, here's your note app. But these are some of my favorite apps. And I know somebody put Adobe Spark. Uh, I love Read, Write, Think trading cards. I sketch. NASA selfies is a hoot. You put yourself in a space suit. You put your picture in there. But along with it, it's not just a fun app but it allows you to find out about the different uh, things in space and things from NASA. So some of these you probably have heard of them. Some of them you may not. So come in here and play with some of these. There's a few new ones that I just recently added that I have found out. Now, teacher tools, tools that I can use as a teacher. Of course, Symbaloo is my first one, but Bitly and TinyURL take those enormous URLs and turn them into short URLs. That's what I use all the time. If you've not looked at Cal Classroom Screen, it's so cool. Um, developed by a teacher. Now, one of my favorites, it's an app and it's, I think it's $3.99. It is well worth it because what it <coughs> does is it gives you question stems to ask the students. So you put your roster of kids in there and you put them at the different level of Bloom's ta taxonomy. And when you randomly pick a student, it will give you a question stem for that student based on what level you put them at. Uh, Novel Effect is one of my favorite ones for the little ones. This was on Shark Tank and Mark Cuban, who's from Dallas, actually purchased it or bought into it and it allows you to you only need it on your phone or your teacher iPad or device you read a book and as you're reading it makes sound effects so if you're reading giraffes don't can't dance and they get to the minuet it plays a minuet and when the hedgehogs do a, a, a whatever they do it plays that music it's totally cool so these are some of mine they're just really really good for teachers to use these are student creation tools. What can kids use to create? And um, some of these you've heard of, some of them you may not, but get in there and play with them. And if you have some new ones for me to add, please do. And then my last one are just generic classroom tools. And some of these are repeats from the other uh, tabs, but FET simulations, amazing. Um, math and science, these are hands-on activities. And if you're doing remote things right now, the FET simulations are awesome because the kids do not have to have the materials that you might have there at school. They're not going to have the manipulatives or the science experiments. Another thing to remember about FET simulations is when you do go back to school, a lot of schools are saying kids can't share things. And so those math manipulatives that you have that they share in centers, they're not going to be able to use without cleaning constantly. And who has time to do that? So the FET simulations may help you there. Um, Go Noodle or Brain Breaks. And Kittle is a really cool um, search engine for kids. I love that one. So this is my workspace. And I have these tools because these are the categories, unless it's like I'm working only with math teachers. These are the generic categories that I have when I'm working with teachers. And so I like to give them, now with Workspace, I can just give them this one link and they have all of this to in their hands right there. And the nice thing about it is, let's say, I hope not, but let's say the Ed Puzzle goes away. I can just delete that off of my um, by web mix, and then you would not see it anymore. So I love the ability to be able to pull all of this together. Now, the other thing I was going to do is show you, well, what if I have a web mix that I want to add to this? So I'm going to go back just to my symbol. Let's see if I can do that. Um, 
Is it the dot? No. Okay. Um. Oh, this is it. okay. I am back on my symbol blue, and so like apps. Um, this is I don't know sixty apps in sixty minutes. What if I wanted to add it to my workspace? So I might create a new web mix, and I think, oh, it goes great in my workspace. I I'm on my <clears throat> I'm on the web mix that I want to add. I come up here to publish, and here is my workspace. And when I click publish, and I go to my workspace, which is right here, you see that 60 apps in 60 minutes is there. So here it is. I'm in my workspace. And I can tell I'm in my workspace. And I used that uh, giraffe text um, to put that little image in there. I can tell I'm in my workspace because I have this icon right up here. And so it's now one of my tools. So if I want to get rid of it, I come up here and I, um, I haven't updated my changes. So let me see, am I in it? Oh, classroom, where is it? 60 apps and 60. Okay, Brian, this may be where I need. I can't remember how to get it out. Uh, oh, the three dots, unpublish it. So those three dots, I just need to. My head. So um, that is my take on how I use the Symbaloo workspace when I am working with teachers. And I really, I think the best thing about it, because I mean, I've always loved Symbaloo and the ability to pull and curate all of my things in one place. Now to have several web mixes in with, with one simple link, it's not some huge gigantic link that people can't remember but to have them all in one place i absolutely love yeah, so. yeah. and the the great thing about that if i can just interject is sure. link doesn't change so quarterj.symbolu.com will stay like that um you know for as long as you have the account so that link is easily shareable you can share that you know forever uh and again have that as a bookmark save that write it down wherever you know wherever you need to that doesn't change it's it's easy to remember um so if a student needs to access it at home you know on any device it's it's a static link that that uh you know makes it easy to access so it's definitely great um and janet one thing that i did want to add on to um you mentioned okay. Kittle, uh, as far as like a center box safe search uh, option, Symbaloo actually just created its own safe search feature. Um, and if you and if you uh, would give me the uh, presentation rights here, I can actually show everyone how to uh, quickly edit that and add the safe search box to their Symbaloo account. This is something new for me. I'm excited. Yes, definitely. So let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay. So when you're logged into your account, you'll see in the center of your web mix, you have a Google search box or anything else, right? Um, if you do want to add the Symbaloo safe search option, you click on your user icon at the top and navigate down to preferences. And once you navigate to preferences, you'll click the preferences button once more. And you'll see here, choose a center box. And you will now see the safe search option. So the safe search option here, once you click on that, scroll down, click save settings and we'll click the symbol logo up here and now you'll see the web oh my goodness option you yeah. just did my day <laughs> so yeah so this is a wonderful new feature that we've added um that anyone can now use again you saw it's within the preferences um but now you don't have to worry so much about what your students are searching uh, you know on the on the web um we've added a ton of filters and we're continuously improving this so um yeah just wanted to share that just to add on to the uh, thank you because that's amazing <laughs> absolutely um i will stop sharing my screen and hand it back to you okay so, well, I don't. All right. So, do we have any questions? Oh, yeah. Here, Good. or Brian. The Q &A. Can... All righty. So, if you have any questions, let's go ahead and uh, start filtering them through the chat. Um, I do have a little sheet here that my colleague has put together. Um, it doesn't look like we have too many questions at the moment, but if you do, please go ahead and throw them in there. We'll be filtering through those. Um, but, Janet, it looks like we have about three or four for you. Okay. Um, so, here I'll we go. Try my we have... best. Yeah. Um, so, it says, 
somebody's asking, um, what was the site that you mentioned that a high school student had created for game design? Gim Kit. It's not for game design. It's a gaming, it's a game site similar to quizzes and Kahoot. It's G I M K I T. And, um, it's just, I love it because it's created by a kid. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, Holly asks, are we getting a copy of the presentation for the sites you're recommending? So uh, yeah, this is actually, anybody that registered for the for the webinar here will actually be getting a, a post-event newsletter with um, a link to the presentation, uh, a bunch of helpful Symbaloo links, um, and all of that. You'll also receive the link to the recorded webinar, so if you do want to refer back to it at a later time, you can do so. Um, and we also encourage you to share the link with any of your colleagues or friends that might not have been able to attend. So you'll be receiving that. Check your um, yeah. If you want my presentation, the slides, it's right here on the screen. Yeah. So it has yeah. the Padlet, all, uh, you know, the links, everything right there. Awesome. Okay. What um, else? Yes. Oh, one thing that I did want to mention, just because we uh, ran into this uh, slight, uh, shortly before the webinar, um, we uh, did have somebody that stated they didn't receive any newsletter reminders for the webinar. Um, if you do not see any email from us with all of these post event resources, um, please go ahead and check your spam or your junk folders just in case our email was filtered through there. Um, and you know, if at the end of the day you still haven't received anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can submit a ticket at help dot .com or tweet or send us a message on Facebook and we'll help you out with the uh, resources. And make sure you follow Symbaloo on Facebook, on Twitter. As well as Janet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see, here we go. Uh, someone asks, can you have more than one wheel to have different class periods uh, in regards to that wheel? Tour? Wheel names, yes. You have to create a free account and then everything is all of your wheels. Like I have a bunch of wheels. I have them for different content areas and you just, you just have your account, so you would just name that wheel first period or second period or whatever you wanted to name it. Yes. Good question. Great. Um, all righty. So now filtering through the chat, um, we'll start with this here. Um, someone asks, for the free account, will inappropriate ads pop up for students on Symbaloo? So no, we actually kind of go through all the ads and we work with specific advertisers. So all the ads are kid friendly. Um, if there is a case where anything inappropriate does pop up, not saying that there's anything going to be extremely bad, um, but maybe a, an action movie ad or something like that, which we have removed in the past. If anything like that pops up, please feel free to send us an email. We will work with the advertiser to uh, remove those type of ads. Um, let me continue going down here. Someone asks, do students have to create a Symbaloo account before they can open our link? Uh, so no, the beauty of Symbaloo is you as the educator, as the admin of the account, um, will be managing and sharing all of that. Um, whether you're using a personal free Symbaloo account, um, you'll be sharing a single Webmix link with your students. Um, but we do recommend using the free pro version where you get a, a workspace, just as you see um, Janet has shared here. Uh, and that will be a link that you'll share with your students. They can add that as a bookmark on their tablets, on their Chromebooks, whatever it may be. Uh, and they can access all the resources there without logging in, signing into any, or creating any account. Um, and anyone else can access that. It's all made publicly. You do uh, determine what content you want to publish publicly. Uh, as Janet showed, how you can unpublish and then publish your new web mixes there. Um, that is, again, what, what will be visible on the front end there. Can I share something non-educational? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> One of the best uses of Symbaloo I've ever seen is to uh, make it your home screen, especially if you travel though, and you can have a, a tile that is American Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Hilton Hotels, your bank. Um, any Amazon, anything that you use a lot, you can make a web mix of it and that can be your home screen. So you're not having to type in AmericanAirlines.com. It just, you just click on it and it automatically goes there. So it's for a personal use. It's great. Um, 
but if you have just things that you use, the sites that you go to all the time, it's a great way to use Symbaloo outside of the classroom. And then some teachers I know for their home screen, they just have a web mix of all of the, the uh, educational tools they use all the time. It might link to their email for school or to their grading system, their grade book or their student information system. It might link to Schoology or Canvas or whatever. So it's more than just a way to deliver things to students. Think about how you can turn it around and use it personally because um, it really is a great tool. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Janet. Um, let's continue with a few more questions here. Um, someone writes, this webinar is above my level. Where do I learn the basics? How to set up the initial symbol for myself? Um, yeah, so just keep an eye out for the uh, email you'll be receiving after this um, event here. Uh, maybe within the next 24 to 48 hours, we will provide uh, as many resources as possible to help you get started with basic Symbaloo tutorials uh, that are on YouTube. You can even search up Symbaloo tutorials uh, now if you'd like, but all of that will add as much content and material as possible to, to help you out and get started as well as share any of the information we've uh, discussed here on the webinar today. So just keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. The tutorials online are so easy. That's how I learned it. You just it's super simple. <laughs> awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so someone is asking, can we have access to the web mixes of the presenter? Yes. So um, she, Janet has um, shared, you'll see here, we have um, the link to the presentation shared on the screen at the moment. Um, but if you want to directly access her web mixes, you can access them at quarterj.symbaloo.com. Um, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Janet. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at the link on the screen. Let's see, let's go down a little more. So someone else asks, is it permitted for a child to make their own web mixes? So by law, I believe children need to be 13 years old to have an email address. Is that correct, Janet? I'm not sure if you know. I'm, I don't wanna, I'm not yeah. sure. That yeah. law changes. As long as as long as the student is old enough to create an email address, they're old enough to create a Symbaloo account, and therefore they can create their own web mixes. Um, again, it's you can go through our disclaimer and our privacy policy at symbaloo.com. Um, but again, as long as everyone is on the on the right page there, on the right side of the law, we can have students create web mixes. We have high school students that have created web mixes, and uh, even up into uh, college and universities for projects. So. Um, Yep. Very good question. Mm -hmm. Any more? Um, it looks like at this point there aren't many more. Um, nope. Right. Nope. Looks like that's it. Well, I've had a great time. This has been tons of fun for me. I love sharing fun stuff with teachers and educators, and especially when they're all over the all over the world. That just amazes me. And I'll go back and show you my, whoops, there's, here's Brian. Um, that's my contact info. So if anybody wants to follow me on Twitter or email me any questions, be happy to take them. Yep. And if you have any questions for Symbaloo, please go ahead and visit us at help.symbaloo.com and submit a ticket and we will get to you as soon as possible. Um, you know, things have been a little hectic here with everyone scrambling to find new tools and, and ways to set themselves up for uh, distance learning and, and all this uh, new approach we have here in education. So uh, please bear with us. We thank you for your patience. Um, tweet us, message us. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Janet, for the wonderful content you've shared here. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, have a great day. Everyone stay safe and be well. And have a good start to school. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Okay.